Hello, hello. What is going on, everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Rake and Profit, rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another live show. And today's live show, we're going to be talking about what sells best on eBay, my top nine items that I like to sell on a regular basis on eBay. So uh, right now I have the, the chat open and unfortunately I'm only on one computer right now so I have to kind of jump back and forth between the items that I really like to sell on eBay and the, and the feed. I'm actually in Austin, Texas right now at the Bonafide Hustlers house and he's actually live right now out in the garage you might have seen me walk over there but uh, I have to bring you guys some content as well and uh, I was trying to think of a video to put together for you guys today and I thought why don't we talk about nine of my favorite items that I like to sell nine different types of items right usually I'll focus on one category whether it's you know shoes or clothing or you know I've done glassware I've done board games but uh, I really wanted to narrow it in today and, and just talk about excuse me the opposite of narrow. I wanted to go a little diverse today and talk about various items that somebody who maybe you're brand new or maybe you're just at a point in your reselling career, career where you're like, I just don't know what to be on the lookout for at thrift stores or garage sales. So I kind of want to share with you guys a bunch of different items. Uh, before we get into it, let me jump into the comments and see who is watching live right now. Looks like we have about 42 people watching live. So uh, welcome, welcome. I know it is it's about two o'clock right now, central time. So I know, you know, majority of you might work jobs. You're probably at work still, but uh, if you're lucky enough to be a full-time hustler or maybe you have the day off, welcome to the show. Rhonda says, so glad for the fun interruption to my day. I'm here to interrupt you, but hopefully in a productive way. Uh, Lone, Lone, Lone Ardell, hello. Michael, what's going on? Kendra, good to see you. AMV tournaments, hello, hello. Appreciate the likes, guys. If you do uh, like these videos, be sure to give it a like. Be sure to subscribe as well before the show starts. Kendra says, spending my day taking photos for eBay. So, Troy, good to see you. Let's dive into this. Uh, we'll talk about the first item that I really like to sell. And then I'll get back into the comments and answer some questions. Uh, let me make sure that this, the audio is okay. Talking about. Okay, that's good. So, Let's dive into uh, my first category of items that I really like to sell. And uh, I want to I want to kind of take a step back and say when I'm selling on eBay, most of the time I'm sourcing my items from either A, thrift stores, you know, Goodwills, Salvation Armies and Savers. I'm from Connecticut, so those are like, you know, the most uh, common thrift stores in my area. B is typically uh, garage sales when it's warmer out and it's really really easy to find, you know, shoes at garage sales plus all the other items I'm talking about and the last way that I find items and it, it really it just depends on what I'm kind of into is either Craigslist or uh, sniping items off of different websites like eBay sometimes I'll even buy things on eBay to sell on eBay there's a bunch of different places I source flea markets and whatnot but uh, thrift stores and garage sales are the primary places you're gonna be able to find these items so <clears throat> the first item is shoes and there's so many different types of shoes that you can sell i mean from uh you know more casual shoes like you know just average casual nikes that someone wears or reeboks to different pairs of uh foot footwear that you know pertain to sporting right it could just it could be running shoes it could be for um you know biking mountain biking shoes or cycling, uh, you know, uh, rock climbing shoes. There's so many different types to, you know, the more formal dress shoes like you have, uh, like you see on the screen right now. And uh, these are some, um, this is a brand right here, Allen Edmonds that I typed up top. That's really high end. I mean, super expensive. These shoes in the store could go anywhere from, you know, a couple hundred bucks up to $500 or more. Allen Edmonds. And, uh, now you just want to make sure that these things are in decent condition. Take a look at the body. Make sure there's not too many scuffs or any tears in the leather. Also, you want to flip the shoe upside down. Take a look at the the bottoms. You want to make sure it's not worn too much. Take a look at the insides. Make sure the sizing's all good, that the, the shoes are actually matching size and everything. But Allen Edmonds is a great brand to resell. There's all different types from Oxfords to loafers. There's a lot of different styles. I'm definitely not a shoe expert. 
But when you come across the brand Allen Edmonds, as in this example right here, it's really hard to lose money and not make a, a good amount of money if they're in really good condition. And you're going to come across all different types of styles and whatnot. Um, but according to this, this description right here, these actually retailed for 395 bucks. And you might be by, might be thinking, you know, I'm not going to be able to find these. Who's who's going to donate these to a thrift store or sell them at a garage sale? You will be so surprised. I tell you, you will be so surprised how many times I've found this pair. And if you're watching live right now, let me know what your experience has been with the brand Allen Edmonds. You know, there's tons of different brands out there when it comes to uh, shoes. Again, there's you know there's really a million different types of shoes, but you know with the uh, the more formal dress shoes, we're looking at some of the brands like you know Johnson and Murphy is very common. I find them all the time. Colhan, um, Salvatore Ferragamos are really popular. Here's one at the top churches, which are a little more difficult to come across, but these sell for really really good money. So be on the lookout for shoes, guys. Again, you know whether it's casual or athletic or uh, formal, shoes can make you really, really good money. Uh, the second item that I want to talk about was baseball gloves, leather baseball gloves in particular. Now there's a bunch of different brands out there from Rawlings to Wilson to uh, Louisville, Mizuno. Uh, let's take a look. Here's a brand Nike. This brand I'm not familiar with right here. Um, I forget how to pronounce this, but it's a very popular brand as well. DeMarini, I believe, it's really popular with uh, softball bats as well and even baseball bats. Uh, but leather, baseball gloves, uh, it doesn't matter if it's infield gloves, outfield gloves, uh, catcher's mitts, uh, can bring you in really, really good money. Uh, the thing to look for when it comes to baseball gloves are the brand, typically. And again, you want it to be leather. Uh, one way that you could tell that a baseball glove is, is really um, – it's, it's more higher end is first of all, the leather will be like super, super soft. It'll just feel really, really nice. Some of like the cheaper gloves almost feel like a plastic. Also pay attention to the details. As you can see in this glove right here that sold for $59.95, uh, which isn't the, you know, the most high end glove ever. You could sell gloves upwards to a hundred or more are the, uh, look at the attention to details. So the stitching, you also see the, um, the leather bound together. You want to pay attention to the details. Um, let's go through some of the sold listings and I'll kind of shout out some of the brands that I've done well with. Mizuno. Mizuno is probably the, like one of my number one brands that I come across out in the field. Uh, now this is new with tags. So I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to click used. You have to find these items new with tags because for the most part, you're not going to. But, you know, as is, as in this example right here, Wilson A1000, 65 bucks. Uh, here's another Wilson A2000, $115. You see the Wilsons are selling really popular. Here's a Louisville Slugger. Uh, you might be thinking, why is this shaped so weird? Uh, it's actually a first base, uh, first baseman's glove right here. So there's a bunch of different gloves. You'll find infielders gloves are typically small. Uh, the webbing is really small. The first baseman's glove kind of has a big web and it's shaped a little differently to be able to scoop, you know, the, um, you know, the bouncing balls and whatnot. The catcher's glove is really thick uh, and the outfield gloves are typically really big just to have a lot of space to catch the ball and the webbing. Um, but there's a bunch of different gloves out there, but they can make you money, guys, from Wilson to Louisville Slugger to Mizuno. Um, the best thing to do is if you find in the field, if you if you actually put your hand in the glove or just open up the webbing, a lot of times you'll find a model number inside. So let me see if I could find the model number on this. I, I could see from the description, uh, but a lot of times it'll be right. Um, it'll typically be either on the side or right in the center of the mitt. I think this one's kind of on the left-hand side of the, the glove right under the ball. Uh, but yeah, baseball gloves can bring you in a lot of money. Um, usually I stick to the men's gloves leather and, and the brands that I mentioned, just make sure in terms of like inspection, make sure that the, the webbing is all connected, that it's laced up properly. Um, sometimes you'll find, I forget what the terminology is, but the little, the leather strings inside, sometimes they'll be missing. You, you want to avoid that. Any tears, any rips, you can uh, avoid that as well. 
if the the glove is really beaten and worn as in this one it's really really worn don't avoid it just because it's worn um, a lot of people actually buy baseball gloves like them worn because it's already kind of broken in and the leather's already really nice and flexible so you know I played baseball my whole entire life and uh, you know getting a new glove was always challenging because it wasn't broken in it took some time so a glove actually having some wear can actually be a good thing as long as there's still some you know, padding in that glove, it can make you some really good money. Uh, number three, the third thing that I want to mention when it comes to selling items and making money on eBay, video games. Video games can make you really, really big money on eBay. Uh, when it comes to video games, I like to focus on a lot of the retro stuff. Um, so, you know, the Nintendo, the original Nintendo, the uh, Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, uh, Dreamcast, even though it's a little older, but it's not like Nintendo, uh, can bring you in some good money. Even the PlayStation 1 can bring you in really good money for like the older stuff. Um, when you start getting to the newer stuff, you know, the 360s, the Xbox One, the PS4, even the PS3, the titles are, are, are a little more important. Um, just because a lot of these things are mass produced, but the retro stuff can bring you in really good money. Uh, again, you don't have to be an expert. I'm not an expert when it comes to, um, to video games, but it's easy, right? Get yourself the eBay app, download it. And when you find a title, just look it up, hit sold listings like I'm doing right here. And, uh, I think you, you might be blown away at how much some of these items are actually selling for. And, uh, as you can see on the screen, you know, some of these items just go for crazy amounts of money. We're looking at uh, a bunch of items, Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, or no, that was Super Nintendo. So uh, yeah, those can bring you in really, really good money. I'm gonna jump into the comments real quick and say hello to some people, 95 people in the room so far. So I just wanna say thank you for uh, watching. Be sure to hit the like button, guys. I really appreciate that. We got Troy Whitsum saying sold five, Baseball gloves this year, Nike, they sold for $120 each. I'm telling you guys, you know, baseball gloves can make you good money. And with spring coming around the corner, you know, I was a baseball player my whole entire life. All I play is softball now. But when it starts, you start getting that feeling, the warm weather coming, the baseball players, they're looking. Like, they're looking for gloves. And, again, they like them. A lot of times people will even buy used gloves because they like them broken in. So be on the lookout for baseball gloves. Um <laughs> Rad says, I forgot my earbuds, so I'm listening out loud uh, while shopping. Hello to all the customers in that store. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lone says, question, how long does it take for your profit to surpass your investment after fees and everything? You know, that really depends on how much money you're spending. You know, if you go out and you spend $1,000 on 100 items or whatnot, you know, it could take some time for, you know, sell-through rates to come through and items to move. But just on a general basis, um, when you're getting started, I mean, you should be able to make a profit within the first 30 to 60 days, to, just depending on how smart you are. When I, when I mean smart, I don't mean like IQ-wise, but I mean like how smart you are with your buying decisions you know if you're brand new to ebay i suggest getting in for items you know sub five dollars per item go to a lot of thrift stores go to a lot of garage sales and what that's going to do is that's going to minimize the amount of investment that you have to put into this business and it's also going to help you to capitalize on these items that you sell you know at 400 500 600 percent roi which means you know if you sell something for 50 but you only paid three or four bucks you know you have so much profit there that it'll even make up for a lot of the investment in the other items that you uh, purchased. So it just really, really depends. Um, yeah, I'm at the Bonafide Hustler's house right now. I actually just walked in on his stream. And uh, if you guys don't know who the Bonafide Hustler is, he's actually, I'm at this guy's house right here. Uh, and he's doing a video live right now, Thrift Finds, I'll resell for good cash plus Q&A. So uh, if you wanna hop over to his channel as well, right now feel free to go check out his video as well but i'm actually at his house right now he's in the garage doing this video i took over the house i said man you better get in the garage and do your video and i'm gonna do my video in here <laughs> uh, but anyways guys uh video games awesome again playstation one uh super nintendo the regular nintendo uh dreamcast even sega genesis can make you money xbox there's so many different systems it's it's insane it'll make your mind blow but uh garage sales are great for video games another great item that you can sell on ebay are men's belts leather belts 
And uh, if you have any uh, knowledge or expertise in clothing, a lot of that will translate over to belts as well. And what I mean by that is Brooks Brothers, a great, great brand for clothing, right? Ermini Gildo, uh, Yegna, uh, Salvatore Ferragamo, Allen Edmonds, right? All these are, are great brands for, you know, shoes, clothing, other accessories. A lot of them will translate over to belts as well. You know, Ralph Lauren. There's so many different brands out there. Belts can make you really, really good money. And as you could see from my screen right now, hopefully you can see my screen. Let me double check. Okay, cool. Um, some of these items could sell for really good money. Not, not every item is going to sell for 40, 50, 60 bucks within the belts category. But if you find the right items, they can make you really good money. For example, here's a brand. I actually sold this brand recently in the uh, jeans category, which I'll be talking about after. This is a brand called Naked and famous. Yes, I'm not being a pervert right now. That's actually a brand, Naked and Famous, very high-end designer brand right here. This belt sold for $64.99. As you can see in some of the other listings, uh, we got a Burberry belt that actually sold. There's that proprietary Burberry design for best offer under $170. Harley Davidson, believe it or not, guys, Harley Davidson does really, really well, not only with boots and jeans and button fronts, but they also sell really well uh, with belts, you know, considering that Harley Davidson is one of the top manufacturers and, and, and sellers of, of, you know, customized leather items. So uh, keep your eye out for belts, guys. Belts can make you really, really good money. Rule of thumb, if you find a belt that looks interesting, go into your eBay app, type in the brand, you know, try to find a similar belt that's sold and then you could hopefully, you know, sell it comparable to what that one sold for. That's how I price my items. I price them uh, based on comparables and what other items that are similar in size, color, style, pattern have sold for. So belts can make you some really, really good money. Uh, board games. Board games can make you some awesome profits. And uh, this board game I actually found one time before when I was out with my good friend Tim. We were going garage selling one weekend, and uh, we ended up walking down this super long driveway. And like it was a really long driveway; it was weird. There was this whole neighborhood-wide tag sale, so we were walking from one side of the street to the other, and we were probably I don't know a block down the road. And we saw a sign for this garage sale, and we walked down this super long driveway. And um, this isn't my listing; this is somebody else's listing. But um, I found this in a garage full of board games. There was so much stuff, and I just saw this box. I mean, this box has got to be, you know, on ten inches wide. I mean, it's big. It's a big board game. It's thick too. And I'm like, this looks interesting. It's by Milton Bradley, which is really, really sought after in terms of like older board games. So I saw the Milton Bradley. I was like, that's a good sign. I saw like the the crazy cover, big tower, you know, freaking knights of armor and all that stuff i'm like this looks interesting pulled up my ebay app looked it up and i was like wow this item is selling for a lot of money the brand milton bradley the the title dark tower board game uh this is uh, a board game that's i don't know if it's electronic or it takes batteries but this this board game it's hard to find it working properly but if you do and it's complete with a manual and everything, this board game can bring you in some really, really big money. So I wanted to share that story with you, but there's so many board games out there, right? Even used board games, which I showed you in this example, used board games that are hard to come across can bring you in really good money. Uh, obviously, you know, anything new in the box, in the shrink wrap, you know, Monopolies, there's a million board games. Those ones are like no brainers. I send most of those into Amazon though, because they tend to do a little better. But the used board games, eBay is the place to put it. And uh, as we scroll down, you're going to see a bunch of different board games that are are doing pretty well. And a lot of these board games I don't even know anything about. Seasons board game plus both expansions plus most promos, $79.99. I mean, um, let's keep going down. Let's see if I could find a board game that I know. Key, Key to the Kingdom board game, 1992 complete, $79.99. I mean, from 1992, that's 92, 02. 12 uh that's like what 25 years old so you know say you find a board game that's 20 25 years old it's 100 percent complete you know that could be something that you know somebody from you know the 70s or 80s and they were playing that in, in 1992 you know maybe they're 20 years old they're playing it and they're it's just nostalgic to them it's important it's something that they want to relive their childhood or whatever and if you have that complete 
you could dictate what that item is going to sell for because there's going to be very few that actually are, are complete. You know, here's a game that I actually found. This is a great example. My mother and I, we were uh, thrifting. Uh, I'm in Connecticut. We were thrifting out in a town called um, Meriden. And uh, we were on our way there, and it was a Saturday. And it was late. It was late in the afternoon. It was probably 1, 2 in the afternoon. And most garage sales have you know, already closed at that time. But I, I saw a sign for a garage sale. Uh, you know, Went down the rabbit hole, followed the, the signs, and got there. And uh, we walked up and actually found this board game. And uh, again, it was an older looking board game. It just looked vintage and in, in, in nature. So I, it drew, it drew, it drew to my, my attention really, really quick. And I'm like, this is interesting. I saw Milton Bradley. I saw the phone. It just looked old. And I, I pulled out the manual and it showed all the contents. I checked, everything was there. And I was like, Holy mackerel. Um, before that I had looked it up and it was selling for like over a hundred on Amazon FBA at that time. On eBay, I think it was a little less, like 60 to 80 bucks. But this is actually an item that I sold. And you'll you'll be surprised at how many board games can actually bring you in some really, really good money. Uh, if you guys have ever sold any board games that kind of blew your mind, share below in the comments. But if you're new to eBay or if you're just, you know, maybe you're even an intermediate and you're still learning, trying to figure out what to sell, board games are they're just a wonderful product to sell on eBay and Amazon and, and can make you some really, really good money. Uh, let's see what's going on in the comments. 113 people watching, 31 likes so far, only two dislikes. So thank you guys for the love. I appreciate it. Cruising Profit, what's going on? Cruising Green, remember in the house, watching one on PC, other one on the tablet. So uh, I think he's watching my my buddy the Bonafide on the on the tablet or the PC. So uh, Bonafide's got 84 watching, 113. So we're close right now. We're we're competing, but uh, let's keep it let's keep it in my favor. Um, is this an experiment? Experiment with what? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, let's see. Did you two have a bet? No, we're just we're just having some fun. We wanted to. We love connecting with you guys, and it's a lot of fun, guys. If you if you want to step up your hustling game and your reselling game and your knowledge, start a YouTube channel because it's one of the best ways to connect with awesome people and learn a lot. So, uh, screen is blurred. If it's blurred, make sure to go to your settings and make sure that make sure you go all the way up to uh, HD. That'll uh, that'll fix your. Uh, your video quality, but anyways, guys, let's um let's dive into the next item. The next great item to sell on eBay, and uh, I have another cool story to share with you guys from uh, from Savers the other day. But it is uh, jackets. I love selling men's jackets. Now, when it comes to clothing in general, this is a huge topic. If you follow my channel, you know I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on clothing because clothing is one of those things where there's just so many factors to take into consideration from the brand to the condition to the style the pattern the size the material the seasonality there's so many things to consider but one of the big things you want to consider is the brand uh, the clothing brand because that can dictate uh, quite often how well an item does but jackets are awesome items one of my favorite clothing items to sell on eBay and when I go into any thrift store I get really excited when I go down the jacket aisle because there's so many opportunities. And actually, just the other day, what what day was it? On I think it was Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday because I left Sunday to come to Austin, Texas, which that's where I am today. Saturday, me and my mother, aka Mama Profits, as I like to call her, she's a reseller as well. She's big into books. Uh, we went over to a local thrift store called Savers, and I went in there, and uh, you know, I was going through the different aisles. I was looking at the shoes, I was looking at the ties, I was looking at the books, I was looking through office supplies, you know, all different types of items, and I came to the jacket aisle, and I was flipping through the, the clothing rack, and you won't believe what I found. I found a, uh, a Patagonia jacket with the hood, it was a puffer jacket, uh, full zip, it had that nanotechnology, and uh, I mean, this was like one of the higher end Patagonia jackets. I mean, it wasn't anything like, you know, $500 new or anything. It was probably, you know, $200 MSRP. But these items are like the Toyota of vehicles. And what I mean by that is they retain their value really, really well. This thing was in like new condition. It might have been worn a couple times, full zip, hood, you know, I think it was uh, polyester material and uh, five dollars. I bought it for five dollars at Savers, and uh, I bring the story up 
up to you for a few reasons. Number one, to let you know Patagonia is a great brand. But number two, don't get discouraged if your thrift stores are priced really high. It happens. You know, If I went into that thrift store and found that Patagonia jacket 10 times on 10 different occasions, nine, nine out of the, those 10 times, it would have been priced at $15 to $30 or more. It's just the reality. Patagonia is a well-known brand. Most of the workers there, they know about the brand. They price it high. Why? Because the MSRP is very high and people love that brand and they buy it. They buy it for 30. They buy it for 40, even used at the thrift store. So the point I'm trying to make is don't get discouraged if they're priced really, really high all the time. Continue to go and look and flip through that clothing rack because every now and then a really, really profitable item like a Patagonia jacket falls through the cracks. I don't know if maybe one of the workers, they had a late night party in the night before, or they just were like, F it, I don't care. Or maybe in probably the, the more likely scenario was it was a maybe a new worker who just priced it thinking it was any, you know, any normal jacket, but uh, it happens. And, and clothing's a great item to uh, focus on, particularly jackets. Lots of brands that you could focus on. Uh, Patagonia is a great brand, as you can see. Ralph Lauren jackets, Brooks Brothers leather jackets. I'm, I'm just flipping through. You know, obviously Harley Davidson does really well. The North Phase. There's tons and tons of different brands, guys. Just go through the sold listings. Arcterix is great. Vintage Tommy Hilfiger is awesome. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, next item I, item I want to share with you guys, and this is an awesome item that I used to always sell, like every single time on Amazon. But if you guys are, uh, if you guys got your ears to the ground, you know that lately there's been a lot of changes on Amazon and they've been restricting a lot of brands and, and, and sellers from, from selling those particular brands on, uh, on the Amazon platform. And as of late, uh, Texas Instruments has been restricted on Amazon. I can't sell it at least. I know a lot of other sellers can't sell it as well unless you're, you're ungated. Um, so I put all my calculators on eBay now. Uh, the calculators that you want to focus on that you're going to find most of the time at garage sales and thrift stores are the TI, which which stands for the Texas Instruments, the TI-83s, the TI-84s. Those are the ones you're going to find most of the time that are going to be worth your time, you know, 40, 50, 60 bucks. Uh, also, one of the higher end uh, versions is the TI-89 Titanium. does really well. So those are the three you want to focus on. There's some other ones that are higher end, you know, even the silver editions are well and, and some other ones. But uh, calculators can bring you in some really, really good money on eBay. And as you can see, they sell really, really quick, especially if it's right before school season. Right before school starts, you're going to get typically a 15 to 20 percent uh, increase in your selling price versus if you list it, you know, during or maybe mid midsummer or something like that. So calculators could bring you in some really, really good money. Also, another great place to get calculators is pawn shops pawn shops. And I actually have a book that teaches you how to make money with pawn shops, which you could check out in the description if you would like. Another great item to sell on eBay, which I love. I love selling these items. Why? They're abundant. They're typically cheap and they're easy to ship and inspect. Uh, jeans. I love selling jeans, guys. There's so many different brands that you could sell. You know, Obviously, the true religions do well if you authenticate them and make sure they're real. Uh, Diesel is another one of those brands that I really enjoy uh, selling. Silver's a great, uh, a great brand as well. Rockin' Republic is another one of those brands. You know, I try to typically stay away from the Levi's uh, and the American Eagle and Aeropostale. They sell extremely well, uh, but typically they sell between 15 and 20 bucks. And as of late, I'm trying to focus on higher end um, Higher selling points, 35, 40, 45, just because I do sell on eBay part time. Um, if I was full time and I had an employee like I used to in, in, in a, a bigger space, I would go with the lower, uh, not the lower end items, but the, the items that sell for a little less just because I would have systems and I would have things leveraged a little bit. Um, but that's up to you, right? That's that's your choice and your business model. Um, but I like to stick with the higher end ones, you know, the, the, the Zegnas, the Diesels, the Rock Revivals do well, like I said. Seven for All Mankind could bring you in some really good money. That that pair actually sold for forty one ninety nine. Dolce and Gabbana, if you could find it. G Star is a great brand. Robin's another great brand. D Square Two is a great brand if you could find it. I've only found it a couple times. Uh, but jeans, yeah, jeans are great. 
easy to sell, easy to list, easy to inspect. And, uh, you know, one of those items that are, you know, they're always going to be in style. So I love selling jeans. Let me dive into the comments. I'm going to share with you guys the last item uh, that I enjoy selling out of the uh, nine top selling items to make money on eBay. Uh, 120 people watching live right now. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys. I feel blessed and super grateful to have so many people watching live right now. So uh, thank you. Raken, you came back to normal job. Uh, no, I, I don't know what that means, but I don't have a job. I do have multiple income streams uh, that I make money with online, which I've talked about several times. Um, but I like to diversify. I don't like to have all my eggs in one basket. You know, there were so many people that I saw put all their eggs in, e in Amazon and they got burned. Uh, so many people who put all their eggs in just eBay and then they get suspended. You know, I like to diversify. I sell on eBay. I sell on Amazon. I sell on Craigslist. I have a YouTube channel. Obviously, I sell my own products, a Shopify store, a membership site. I do affiliate marketing, email marketing. I like to diversify. And, you know, with my personality, I just enjoy doing different things and I enjoy adding value in different ways and helping others. So for you, um, you know, maybe going into one thing is, is right for you, but I definitely recommend diversifying for sure. So if that's a job, then I guess I have a job. Um, June D says, I'm having a hard time selling Miss Me jeans. That's a women's uh, brand, I believe. For some reason, also Lucky Brand or Joe's jeans. So I'm not familiar with Miss Me jeans, so I can't help you out there. Uh, Lucky Brand, here's the thing with Lucky Brand. It's it's mass produced. There's hundreds of thousands of them out there. So if you're not taking amazing pictures, if you don't have great keywords, awesome titles, measurements in your description, item specifics on point to help you rank, if you're not running sales at times, you're going to have a hard time selling those, those brands, you know, unless it's new with tags, or you just somehow just get lucky. So uh, Joe's jeans, I do pretty well with Joe's jeans. I actually just found two of them the other day and, uh, got them listed up. So you're going to have to make sure you're focusing on the picture quality. You're focusing on your keywords. You're focusing on your descriptions. You're running sales. If you're not already uh, upgraded to an eBay store, I'd recommend getting one not only to help organize your store, but to run the sales, to be able to go on vacation mode, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do, I do well with Joe's jeans, lucky brand. I typically don't mess with them quite often. So uh, Alan says, what do you do with the items that do not sell and has been piling up? I'd either donate them or I would run a significant sale on them. Just get rid of them, break even, or you know, just take the listing down because don't forget, if you're running auctions, every time that auction ends, you're going to get hit with an insertion fee, uh, a listing fee. The same thing <coughs> with the 30-day the buy it now. Even if you have 30 days... Um, and then, or until canceled or whatever it's called, after those 30 days, you're going to get hit again with that fee unless you've, you know, you've got a bunch of free listings with your store. So it could be a good option to just uh, donate them or just can sell to get rid of them cheap and learn your lesson next time that, you know, it happens to me all the time where, you know, I buy an item and I list it and it doesn't sell and I keep dropping the price and, you know, I do everything right, but it just doesn't seem to sell. You know, I learn and I, I don't make the same mistake next time, right? Or I price it differently. <laughs> Terrence says, I put dead stuff in a 99 cent auctions or I donate. Well, there you go. You can definitely do a 99 cent auction. The thing I, I hate about the auctions is a lot of times you don't even get a bid. And if you do, you'll just get like a single bid at like 99 cents and you end up losing money on it. So, you know, if you've got that much stuff stacking up, you, you know, you might want to do that. It might be a good option for you. Uh, Diana sells on eBay. I love the name. It says, I sold 10 jeans yesterday. Giving you a little clap. Uh, Rhino says, Raken, how do you deal with trolls? Message you on eBay and they have zero feedback. I uh, typically just ignore it if it's just a troll. Um, I actually used to release my eBay name, and I still have my old eBay store that's out there. I don't have many items listed in it. Um, but I've actually created a new store that I don't put on YouTube, and I don't tell people just because I don't want the trolls bothering me on YouTube. Uh, but if, if, if you're a YouTuber, you're going to get a ton of trolls coming to your store and just screwing with you. But if you're not a YouTuber and you're just getting people messing with you, which happens – 
I would just ignore the message, block them. Uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. So, Kurt says, hey, Steve, does the offer to buy OA X-Ray at half off the first month still good? If so, could you reply with the link? If you actually go over to my YouTube channel, um, let me see if the screen is still being shared. Yeah, if you go over to my uh, YouTube channel, OAX, um, excuse me, oopsies. If you go to Rake and Profit and you go here. Okay, and you go here. There should be a link to that right in the description so you can check that out. Go back to my buddy's. My buddy's video. Uh, let's see. Oopsie doopsies. All right, cool. Um, Peach State Thrift says video games you cannot test for working conditions. Should you take a chance and list? I'll be honest with you guys. I've sold quite a few video games that I just couldn't test. I didn't have the system, um, and I took the risk. Right, but you want to take an educated risk if it looks like really sketchy and it's like beat up and it, it just looks dirty and you clean it and it just it just doesn't feel right test it or you know sell sell it with a huge disclaimer saying i wasn't able to test it right uh either way if you can't test it disclose it just do it i mean i'll be honest there's been times where i didn't disclose it and i was fine but there's been you know two or three times where i didn't test it i didn't disclose it and i got my I got bitten in the ass, I tell you, it's, it happens. So, uh, especially with the older games. So just be careful, right? Just be careful with that. I would try to test it as, as best as you can. Do you run auctions? I typically run buy it now with the best offer. I only do auctions if I'm selling something that's very, very popular, something that I know there's going to be a lot of watchers, a lot of bids, a lot of people interested in, and possibly hoping for that, uh, that, that battle, right? That war between a couple sellers just bidding it up. But I typically don't, and, and I sell mostly clothing. I do sell a lot of random items, electronic shoes, different items like that, but it's typically buy it now with the best offer. I had a person buy an item for $700 and then put in a canceled request within 30 minutes. Now that $700 is counting towards my sales. Would that come off eventually? You know, that's funny. I don't know the answer to that. I want to say it will come off once eBay processes that uh, in their system. So I'd probably give it a couple days and it should come off. Uh, Kim says, hey, Kim, how you doing? Watched another video of yours on ties. Found a few Turnbull and Acer. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Great brand. After and was wondering if the different label placements meant anything. Can't seem to figure it out. Uh, I'm not sure. What do you mean by the label placements? Like the label on the item is in a different location. Um, I don't think it, it would really matter where the label is. That brand is in super high demand and it's hard to come across It'll bring you good money. Uh, what I would do is just take a bunch of pictures. If it just looks weird, I don't think that's a brand that's going to really be like counterfeited. I just don't think it will be. It's not like Gucci or Louis Vuitton or something like that. Just take a bunch of pictures, and um, that should be should be good enough for your listing. Vlogs by Cali. What's going on, Cali? Good to see you. Says, how do you get watchers to buy your item? You know, there's no way to really convert them. Uh, it's just typically the watchers just kind of is a gauge for how much interest is, um, you know, on a particular item. So how do you get them to actually convert? There's really no way that I know of. I mean, you could run a sale that might that might intrigue them, right? I think, I don't know if eBay does it now to when you, you put a sale on an item if it emails them. I think because I had gotten an email and it was like, this item's on sale now or something like that. Um, that might work like message them I don't think the watchers right so I'm not sure hey college picker in the house what's going on man I, I seen you in uh, the bona fide hustlers chat as well bouncing back and forth uh, June says do you wash your clothing items no I don't for 99% of them 1% uh, of the items I will wash if it's dirty or if it's smelly or if you know I always say this put your put yourself in the buyer's shoes if you would receive that item and be disappointed then wash the item but I typically don't uh, Ernie says, I'm a beginner. What's the biggest noob mistake you've made? Uh, as a beginner, one of the biggest noob mistakes uh, that I made was not spending enough time inspecting my items, right? Whether it's shoes or it's clothing or it's 
you know, the next item I'm going to talk about is DVDs. Inspect, 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 inspect. If you buy a bunch of DVDs, which an, they're another great item to sell on eBay, just make sure they're real. Don't sell any fakes or bootlegs. Inspect, open up the DVD, flip over the CD, make sure there's not a bunch of scratches, make sure that the manual's included, make sure that all the CDs are there. Uh, the same with clothing, you know, if you're selling a blazer, take a look on the outer the outer uh, shell of the actual item. Look through the sleeves. Take the, uh, the the item and flip it inside out. Take a look at the lining. Check the pockets, the armpits, the buttons. Uh, you know, give it a little smell check every now and then. Who knows? You know, there's a million things you could do. Don't be a weirdo about it, but you know what I'm saying. Inspect, inspect, inspect. I can't tell you how many times when I was new, I was so freaking excited. I bought the item. I brought it home. I got ready to list it, and boom, the thing's like torn in half. I picked up a shirt once. I swear to you. I don't remember the brand. I don't remember the specific time, but I just remember – there was a time when I had picked up an item and I was really excited and the whole back of the shirt was like torn in half. And I'm like, what a dum dumb. I couldn't believe it, but you know, I was excited and the adrenaline was rushing. But anyways, guys, to switch gears, the last item I want to talk about was DVDs. And I actually sold about 10 of these DVDs recently. And, um, well, when I say recently, like months ago, so Sorry about that. Uh, the DVDs are called uh, the ones that I sold were Les Mills, and I found I was at a Goodwill. My mother and I we were actually on our way to, I think it was, it wasn't Rhode Island. I think we were spending the weekend uh, out in the New Haven area, the outskirts of Connecticut, and we were going through this this long strip called the Berlin Turnpike. There's a Salvation Army on it. There's a Savers. There's a Goodwill. And I got to the Goodwill, and I was going through the DVD section. I saw a whole stack of these Les Mill DVDs, like workout DVDs. And it didn't look any special. This was actually it right here. Um, this isn't my listing. But anyways, um, this is what it looked like, Les Mills Body Pump. And there was like 12 of them. And I tell you, if there was only one or two, I never in a million years would have scanned it. I scanned it with the Amazon app because I was selling on Amazon DVDs mostly. Um, but I ended up putting them on eBay because they were sh were restricted, I think. Um, but there was like a stack of 10 or 12. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Because when you see a stack of 10 or 12 of anything, you always want to to look it up or scan it just because there's like it's just a big opportunity if it's profitable. And I looked it up on 75 bucks used. And I was like, whoa. And I looked it up on eBay and it was like 50, 60 bucks used. And I was like, holy crap. I went through every single one of them and every single one of them was worth at least 30 to 40 to 50 bucks. It was like one of my biggest jackpot DVD scores that I ever found. I probably made $500 profit off that. No lie. And uh, I didn't know anything about Les Mills. The funny thing is the gym that I just joined, they have Les Mill workouts. And it's this whole like workout program where it's like, a mixture between like weights and cardio and it's like this class atmosphere group setting. Anyways, if you ever come across Les Mills DVDs, buy them. There's so many of them. There's like, it's like a million of them. But anyways, um, DVDs can bring you in really, really good money. And I actually just found a, um, I forgot what the name of it was, but I was at Savers uh, before I left on my trip to Austin. And it was this, this set of it was a season of something old i don't remember what it was called but uh, it was going for like 30 bucks on ebay and it was only 2.99 so i mean there's so many opportunities i wish i could educate you more like what specifically to find and what to look for to be honest i just scan items i look them up if it looks older or interesting or it's like a box set i just look it up that's the best advice i can give you um but dvds can make you really really good money and if you live in an area where there's a lot of garage sales Look at the DVDs. Stay away from the mass-produced ones, you know, the best-selling Tom Hanks, you know, Armageddon's, and, you know, well, you stay away from those. You want to find, like, the seasons, uh, the more, like, how do I put it, just older, rare, just weird. Like, that's the best way to say it. I'm not, like, super, super educated when it comes to DVDs, but I know how to spot the ones that are 
that are worth money because they're just odd. They're unique. I've never heard of them before. Those are the ones you want to go after. So uh, hopefully that advice helped you guys out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, what sells on eBay, nine top selling items to make money on eBay. I really enjoyed compiling this, this list for you guys and I hope that I was able to bring some value to you guys. So when you go out to thrift stores, garage sales, pawn shops, flea markets, whatever you do to source items, this could be in the back of your mind. You could remember, okay, Steve mentioned Les Mills and I see a Les Mills DVD right in front of me. I'm going to buy it. Or, hey, I remember Steve mentioning leather belts. I see a bunch of, you know, a set of seven Brooks Brothers belts and they're only a dollar each. Or, you know, I heard someone talking about Alan Edmonds shoes. Who was that? I remember them saying it was worth money and it's only four bucks. That was the goal of this video. And uh, hopefully I helped you guys out. I really do enjoy interacting with you guys. It's fun for me. It's entertaining. But you guys also help me out a lot. You know, when we have this conversation through YouTube, sometimes I'll make a mistake or I'll say something and I don't know the answer and you guys come in and rescue the day. So I appreciate you guys. Bye, George. says Smash that like button, y'all. 111 watching and only 55 likes. I'm telling you, man. It came right from George's mouth. He wants you to hit the like button. So what else can you do? Uh, Harley says, we use fabric softener sheets in our storage totes for the smell. Yes. Another thing I've also done before when I ship out my clothing items, I don't do this all the time, but sometimes I'll sell a clothing item that has that musty little, is it musty or musky? I don't know, but it has like that old closet smell. I'll take a little tiny piece of the dryer sheet, just a tiny clipping, not enough for anyone to really notice and just put it somewhere in the poly bag and then close it up and ship it. And when they open it up, it has a fresh smell. So at least the first smell won't be something disgusting. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you guys had a great day. If you did like this video, be sure to hit that like button, guys. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Also, check the description down below. Be sure to get our free book. 100 amazing items to resell. I'm actually on the website right now. And if you hit this green button, yes, send me the free book. You'll get the book. It's 100 of the best-selling items that I like to sell. My partner, Chris, which I showed you on the screen share before. Hopefully, you subscribe to his channel as well. And the college picker who is in the comments. These are our you know, favorite items that we like to sell. And if you enjoyed this video, you know, I covered clothing, shoes, belts, all that stuff. This book actually dives a lot deeper into it and will share with you specific brands, items, how to inspect the items, what to pay, what they sell for, what to avoid, how to inspect, like I said. So I'm telling you, you want to get this book. It's 100% free. There's no upsells on the book or anything. Just get it. Download it to your phone. And when you're at a garage sale or a thrift store, just whip it out or study this. I'm telling you, this book will make you some freaking money. So with that being said, guys. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video and have yourselves a fantastic week. Also, if you guys are going to uh, ASD, be sure to say hello if you see me over there. I'll be in Las Vegas, I think the 19th to the 22nd. So uh, I'll check you guys out there. And um, yeah, feel free to say hello. But uh, yeah, have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.